Okay, hello again, Grade 8. Now we are going to be going into what the phases of matter, and this is on page 5 of your booklet. So please make sure that you're on page 5 of your booklet. And we're going to be discussing, and most of you should know this already, we're going to be discussing how particles behave in different phases based on the temperature. Temperature is going to influence these phases. So on a microscopic level, these phases can be represented as below. So if I had to break this down, just imagine that this is a substance, you, an unknown substance. You have never seen a substance before. When the substance is in a gas phase, that means that the molecules or the particles are dispersed. So they, they are spread out within the container. They are not close together at all. They're spread out. When they're in a liquid, they're closer together. So and they're not as spread out, they're not as dispersed, they tend to come closer together. Then, when the substance is in a solid, it is going to be tightly packed together, very compact, and it could even be in a crystal lattice form. Okay, so depending on the temperature, this will influence the phase of matter, how my matter, because remember particles make up matter, how my matter is represented or in which phase it is in. So let's look at solid. If I heat up the solid, it's going to become a liquid at certain, at certain points. It's going to have a melting point and it's going to become a liquid. Then if I continue heating up that liquid, it's going to become a gas. Now all of a sudden, I switch the stove off. What's happening now? It's no longer a gas. It is now cooling down and it's becoming a liquid again. And if I have to even put it in the freezer, what's going to happen? It's going to become a solid. So think of water, boiling water on a, on a pot. If I have to put a pot of water on the stove, what's going to happen? I put it on a certain heat, it starts bubbling. It starts steaming. Why is it steaming? Because it is moving from liquid phase to gas phase because of the heat. However, when that that gas hits the top of the lid of the pot, what's going to happen? It's going to form liquid. Why liquid? Because the pot lid is a lot cooler than the actual pot. So that is condensation. The water is condensing or con the condensation is taking place and those water droplets are being formed. I'm going to take that pot off the stove and leave it in the kitchen for a while to cool down and then take that water or that substance and put it in a container and then put it in the freezer what's going to happen it is going to freeze so as you can you see depending on the temperature the actual substance is going to have a different phase of matter this is why we say that elements and compounds have different melting points and boiling points so make sure that you you have a look out on the side over there there is there are ice there is steam and then there is a glass of water okay what is sublimation sublimation is literally we skip the the liquid phase we go from solid directly to gas okay that's all you need to know at grade eight level Let's carry on so based on what I've just told you, I want you guys to have a look at the table on page five and I want you to fill it in. And it's exactly what you saw in the conical flasks in the previous slide. Solids have a definite shape. They do not flow. They are almost impossible to compress and they expand when heated. Liquids have no definite shape. They flow depending on the shape of the container. They're going to take on that shape. And they're very difficult to compress. Gases have no definite shape. Gases are spread completely to fill the container and they are easily compressible. So please fill in this table, pause the video, fill in the table, because these are the properties that you guys need to learn and, they need, and you need to learn it off by heart based on what I've told you in the previous slide and this one as well. So once again, I went ahead of myself in the previous slides and I started discussing melting points and boiling points. So this sec, this slide should be easy peasy. It should be nothing new to you. And we discussed um, that all matter can change from one state to another, depending on the temperature. And the phase change occurs when certain temperatures are reached. So we use the term melting point and boiling point. And just like I showed you before, 
we have liquids where our molecules are closer together, okay, but there's still some space. Liquids are tightly, I mean, sorry, sorry, solids are tightly um, packed together, very compact, and gases are dispersed within the container. Evaporation is going to lead to gases. Okay, condensation is going to lead to liquids. Melting is going to lead to a liquid. And freezing is going to lead to a solid. And remember, once again, I want you to write a note here. Sublimation is the phase change from directly from solid to a gas, so it skips a liquid phase. Please make a note of that in your booklets. On page six of your booklets, there is a little activity there on phases of matter on the theory that you've just learned. I'd like you to complete that activity. Um, so you've got to color the squares about, um, about liquids red, the square about gases green, and the squares that are solids yellow. And then you draw a line on the yellow path for rubber the rat to get to the cheese, okay, because it has to be a solid. So this is a nice little activity for you just to um, summarize what you've learned before. I want you to fill this in for me, and then we will carry on with the next section of work. Okay, great eggs. So now we're going to be, once you've done it, finished with Robo the Rat, we are going to be looking at different types of substances on page seven. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going through each definition with you, which you need to fill in. However, the examples you need to work, you need to complete the examples yourself after each definition. I want you to think of different types of examples. And if you get stuck, just drop me a message during the lesson or drop Mr. Ginsburg a message during the lesson. But in this actual um, schematic that you see in front of you, we've got all matter. And all matter is going to either exist within a pure substance or a mixture. Okay. So a, a pure substance cannot, like an element, cannot be broken down into a smaller um, um, form. Okay. With a chemical, um, within a chemical or physical means. But a mixture can be broken down physically. Okay. If I look at this table, you see that you've got elements and compounds. Compounds can be broken down. But you need to use chemistry to break down the, chem the, the compound because there's a chemical bond there. They've been formed. There's an actual fixed chemical bond. Elements cannot be broken down to anything smaller. The elements is how it is. You're not going to break it down. Mixtures. Mixtures means that they physically, um, they are physically, um, what's the word, bonded, but they are not chemically bonded. So they can exist within the same glass or they can exist within the same container, within the same substance they can exist together, but there is no actual chemical bond. So we've got two different types. We've got homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous mixtures are any mixtures that is uniform throughout. In other words, they have the same structure, they are Everything is 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 completely it's 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 a it's a regular repeated pattern um, of 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 mix a mixture of of compounds or elements. A heterogeneous is any mixture that is not uni uniform throughout. The composition varies from region to region, so it's not always the same. So ice cubes and soda, for example, the ice water mixed with the soda okay, which is carbonic acid and flavoring. Therefore, different parts of the glass are going to have different compositions. Same thing for if salt and pepper is mixed. It's not going to be the same throughout. I hope this makes sense. Please drop me a message if you get stuck. And we'll carry on from now on. We're going to go through each definition, and I want you guys to fill in the examples. So the first example, well, the first definition we're going to look at is what is a pure substance. So a pure substance consists of one type of particle only. So please make sure that you fill that in. It consists of one type of particle 
only. So compounds can be pure substances, just like elements, okay? So that that those pure substances, there are different, they are there's one type of particle that are bonded together to another type of particle. So for example, ammonia, which is NH3, is one nitrogen atom combined with three hydrogen atoms. So two different types of pure substances are coming together and they are bonding. Water, for example, is two hydrogen atoms that are combined with one oxygen atom. And then sodium chloride, which is NaCl, is one sodium um, ion for every chloride ion in the crystal at lattice. So that is formed in a solid structure. It's a salt. And those, that positive, that positive um, sodium is bonded to the negative chlorine and because they have different charges, they are attracted to each other and they form this compound. We'll get to that later, do not stress. Another example of a pure substance is going to be your diatomic molecules. So these are certain atoms um, or certain elements on your periodic table that exist as more than one atom. So that is going to be most of your halogens, uh, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, bromine, um, I don't know, what am I forgetting about, chlorine, um, iodine, there's seven in total that you guys need to know, which we will we will go through that a little bit later in the actual um, booklet. But for now, write in your definition and write a few examples down. And if you if you have chosen a chemical formula, if you have chosen a, a chemical compound, make sure that you write down the actual chemical formula for that compound, please. So we were just discussing we were just discussing compounds. Remember, two or more elements that are bonded together. So please fill in your your definition. It is a compound as a substance formed where two or more chemical elements are chemically bonded together. Chemical. So there was an actual reaction took place for those elements to bond together. Some examples of these are methane, which is CH4. Okay, water, carbon dioxide, or sulfuric acid, for example. So if you look at the, these are molecule diagrams, so they actually show a mole, what a molecule would look like of these substances. You don't need to know this now, but the, each line represents a bond between the elements. Each line represents a bond between the elements. And we're going to show you a little bit more about this later on. Um, I think in grade 10, you're going to start working with these types of molecule diagrams. Okay, so then a mixture. A mixture is a material made of two or more substances that are not chemically bonded. So remember, I, I spoke to you about this before. Um, I went into this in quite, quite detail. Uh, I said they physically together, they've been put together physically, but they're not chemically bonded whatsoever. So if you look in this little picture that we have in front of us, the the round bottom flask has got a particle of substance one and, and particles of substance two. And these substances are within an aqueous form or within a liquid form in this flask, but they're not chemically bonded. They are just chilling in the same space, guys. They're just in the same space. They are not sharing electrons. They are not sharing anything of their atoms. If you look at um, the conical flask diagram, you will see that there is a, this compound is, I think if I look closely, it looks like water, because it's got the Mickey Mouse shape. That is a compound. It is a conical flask of water, which is H2O. Therefore, there is chemical bonding that took place. So please make sure that you are very very clear on the difference between um, a mixture and a compound sometimes people can get quite confused um, on about the two so please make sure that you know the difference okay molecules so you can have a molecule of a compound you can have a molecule of an element here okay a molecule is a group of atoms held together in a fixed ratio what does a fixed ratio means that means that the proportion of how the how these elements or compounds are joined is absolute it is fixed it does not vary okay and they are held together by chemical bonds the atoms could be the same type type or different type so for example two elements come together hydrogen and oxygen 
a bond together. How many molecules of H2O do I have? I could have one molecule or I could have a million molecules. Just depends on the volume or the amount of or concentration within a particular substance. Then we have um, we have what we call diatomic molecules. Like I said before, these are elements that exist as diatomic mo uh, exist as more than one atoms. So you need to know these, by the way. You need to know these, and these are nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Please write this down somewhere. You need to know these these diatomic molecules. Very very important. And if you can highlight this on your periodic table. Highlight this because this is a, a molecule that is, it's it's diatomic meaning it's two. So oxygen exists as two atoms. Um, iodine exists as two atoms. And usually when these type of molecules bond with other uh, other elements, they have to break apart first before they bond with another element. And we call that dissociation energy. But we'll get to that later. So have a look at this picture. This picture shows one hydrogen atom, two hydrogen atoms, one hydrogen um, molecule. Why? Because there's more than one. As soon as there's more than one, it is a molecule. Then we have two hydrogen molecules. And why, what is that little letter at the bottom? That little letter, that two, tells me how many atoms of that element are involved in the molecule, are contributing towards the molecule. Okay. Okay, so this is our crystal lattice, which is, it's, it's in a solid shape. So what it is, is it's symmetrical, symmetrical mean, meaning that it's always the same on each layer, symmetrical, or it is the same in length and breadth. Okay, 3D arrangement, 3D, three-dimensional arrangement of atoms inside a solid. Okay, regular meaning. That is the regular repeated 3D arrangement is always the same. And a lot of salts are arranged like this. If you look at NCL, you'll see that the purple represents the sodium and the yellow represents the chlorine. And they, it's always the same. On each layer, it's always the same. And they are bonded together within this crystal, crystal lattice. So they form these crystals. Why? Look at salt, guys. Salt looks like a crystal. That is. That little grain of salt is a crystal lattice. You're putting that on your fries when you have your fish and chips. Pretty cool, isn't it? Um, so for now, I just want you to make sure that you understand what this is and you have highlighted that section. We're going to go into a little bit more of this later on. I'm going to show you how to draw a particle diagram of a crystal lattice. At the top of page eight, you will see that there is an actual summary for you guys to highlight and to make little notes for yourself um, regarding everything you've learned. So far, you have learned about um, elements, mixtures, and compounds, and you have seen how they overlap. There's a lot of overlap between a molecule and an atom. There's a lot of overlap between the a molecule, you can have a molecule of a mixture, you could have a molecule of a compound. Can you see it doesn't, they don't just exist in isolation. There's a lot of overlap here. And this is where we test you. This is where we test you because I could give you something, I could give you a substance, I could say to you, is this a mixture? Is this a compound? Is it a molecule? What's going on here? I could, I could, I could drill you on that in that aspect. So please make sure that you have a look at this. And just highlight what, and, and make sure that you understand exactly what is going on in the, with these different definitions and these different terms. Okay, and atoms are represented as single sphered spheres. So what we show, what we are showing you here is these are called particle diagrams. So we show how the particles are arranged, whether they are atoms or whether they are molecules. How are they arranged? Usually molecules are represented by two or more spheres or circles. Molecules of elements are represented by two or more spheres of the same size and color, so that's important for you. If it's the same size and the same color, chances are that's an element, guys, okay? Molecules of co or compounds are represented by two or more spheres of different sizes. So let's have a look at our water smack bang at the bottom here. By the way, 
water is always this this is water yeah i'm just putting a bracket water is always represented as the mickey mouse why because hydrogen is the hydrogen atom is a lot smaller than the oxygen atom and due to how the the hydrogen and the oxygen bond together they form that mickey mouse arrangement so when you see the mickey mouse it's water and this is an example of a molecule of a compound each mickey mouse is one molecule okay I really hope this makes sense and once again if you guys get stuck please drop me a message i'm more than willing to help you regarding this so at the bottom of of this page page eight you are now required in the rest of the period to complete this particle diagram in pencil please you are going to look at the particle picture and you are going to use that summary that i just showed you to actually decide what's going on in this picture so let's look at the first one and i'll tell you what's happening in the first one the first one it's all the same size firstly it's all the same color so that should give you an idea what's going on and look at the arrangement the arrangement is a regular repeated pattern okay regular repeated pattern so would this be a solid or a gas it's definitely a solid gas those those particles are not dispersed is this a pure or mixture? This is definitely a pure substance because it's an element. It's all the, they are all the same, it's the same particles. It's one type of particle that is represented here, not more than one type of particle. Is it an element or a compound? It's definitely an element. And um, are these atoms, molecules, or a crystal lattice? Okay, so in this situation, it is atoms and a crystal lattice, to be honest. I think so. Because usually crystal lattices are compounds um so maybe we won't put crystal crystal lattice there but it's definitely atoms so please write that in now remember this is all subjective a lot of this is subjective but you guys can i really think that you can do this you don't need me to do this and the next lesson will go through all the answers regarding this so please do this in the rest of the period and we will see each other soon have a good day